dear friends now we have come to eighth part of shiva sutra the first sutra says what does it say you inhale the breath the breath goes inside you go with the breath and you come out the breath comes out the gap between the incoming breath and the outgoing breath there should be a junction where it turns concentrate on that part that's what the first sutra it says now the eighth sutra we have come back once again here the eighth sutra says it is something just like the first sutra but bit of modification what is this modification the incoming breath goes inside you go with the breath your entire consciousness awareness goes with the breath inside it goes deep up to your center part navel then it once again comes back as the breath should go out that particular junction the turning point you are just not looking at that in a scientific way or mathematical way just the point now you are seeing the point with that most devotion with that most faith with that most godliness and you think that is a important place where just you concentrate and devote yourself to the god this sutra eighth sutra says concentrate in the gap this may be working well for the people who are scientific oriented they can understand they can go there and come out they can find out the gap but for the people who are highly devotional this particular sutra eighth sutra with that most devotion center of the two junctions of the breath concentrate and know the nova know the nova means understand who you are so here in the first technique there was no devotion but in the eighth technique you have the devotion i and you or many common people we have high devotions toward high devotion towards christ or krishna or rama or tirupati god but do we have the same devotion towards us we devote on somebody else devotion on somebody else do we have the same devotions to us this shiva tantra says the body is a temple shiva says to parvati the body is the temple the body is the divine so he says treat your body as divine it is sacred while you are taking breath you just don't think you are taking the breath alone you are thinking you are taking the breath for some divine purpose you are eating you are not eating the food for somebody else you are eating the food for the person who is inside you the divine person inside you you are walking so all your actions all your actions you are doing for some divine so this sutra says that is from morning to night in whatever actions you do you are inhaling the breath your awareness goes with the breath and there is a gap concentrate on that gap and that gap is the divine that gap is the devotion and that gap is the place where you understand who you are who is inside you there is some divine power inside you that center part is the divine part the saints the people who live in himalayas or here anywhere you find there are people who treat their bodies as so beloved bodies they think their body is something they love their body and they take care of it and there are some people 
who misuse the body. They eat over food, uh, they drink, they smoke, they, 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 they do not go to bed at proper time, they do not take bath. So, many think their body has something, their body has divine and some think, in fact many think the body is just a instrument to carry on your activity. So, this is the sutra which says, your body is not a body at all, it is the temple of you, a divine person is living, you are not showing your divinity to somebody else, no need to go and show your devotion to some unknown idol. It is the devotion can be shown inside and you can feel it only at the time you take the breath inside the breath goes out, the minute gap that is the devotional part, that is the part which you have to concentrate with full devotion. When you are eating, do not think you are eating, the divine inside you is eating. When you are drinking the water, you are not drinking the water, it is the divinity inside you which asks for the water. You doing any action, that action is contributed to the divine divinity. You are taking a bath, you are not taking a bath for you, it is the bath given to you, given for the divinity inside you. So, your whole life changes through this technique. So, this technique with 100 percent at most devotion center on the two junctions of the breath and know the knower. Who is the knower? We are the knower. Who is the, what is the known? Known and knower. You see observer and observed, controller and controlled. So, you are the knower, what is the known? The divinity inside you, that you can find out what the divine inside you needs, needs what food and the breath is the food and in the breath there is a prana, as the breath goes inside the food is given to the soul and the same breath when it comes out it is empty, empty the divine is given, the prana is given when it goes it goes empty. And as you concentrate daily incoming breath, the gap concentration, out goes the breath, then once again you are taking inhaling the breath, the gap you are concentrating. That gaps as you concentrate on that gaps from morning to evening and you as you do your worldly activities and you will find whatever the action which you are doing, it the actions are not for you, it is the divine person inside you. So, all your actions will result in betterment of your body, the body is the temple, love your body, she is, it is the beloved one. If, will the divine inside you ask you to drink alcohol, will it call for an alcohol, will it? Will the divine inside you ask you tobacco, nicotine? Will the divine inside you ask you, see the movie for tw 12 hours, sit in the in front of television and watch cricket match for so many hours, your divinity inside you does not allow you. So, once you understand the breath and the power of the breath and inside the breath there is prana which goes inside and the gap when you are not either inhaling or exhaling, that gap, that gap is considered to be the dead, your body is dead. So, with full awareness as you concentrate, you understand the devotion, you understand the knower and what is known and all the activities which you are carrying will be full of divinity oriented. This is the eighth sutra of Shiva, just close your eyes. Sit erect.
just take the breath inside slowly the breath goes inside you are going with the breath goes deep inside up to your navel then there is a point where it has to come back outgoing breath should go out that gap concentrate goes out once again you have to take inhale the breath the gap so two gaps you have found out incoming same breath goes out so the turning point the gap the breath goes out you are inhaling the breath the gap that gap you are just not knowing that gap you are understanding is the highly devotional part you understand the divinity inside you who you are whatever the work you do is not for you is for the divinity your eating becomes a divine your bathing becomes a divine your working becomes a divine so all your activities it's not for you and it's for the divine then your body becomes a temple it is not a just a mechanism so understand said sutra of shiva says with that most utmost devotion concentrate on the center of or the, the junction of the breaths and know what you understand who is the knower you and what do you know the divinity just relax and feel the gaps as you take the breath inside your stomach should bulge out you're going deep 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 inside there is a point where you turn the gap it comes up up and it goes out once again a gap before you inhale the breath that is the divine divinity understand concentrate on the gaps slowly open your eyes just rub your hands and just touch on your eyes and just open <coughs> now my dear friends i just request you what do you understand by this have you experienced any type of something a mild difference can you find out any difference in your see as you concentrate on the gaps concentrate on the gaps your thoughts in the mind everything will be you know put in its order and your all your consciousness is not in your thoughts but in say with your breath so you are aware of your breath and the gap you are aware so as you keep on concentrating what do you feel and i have told you attach the devotion part in it shiva says not i say shiva says the devotion part should be attached and as you give the devotion label inside 
So, whatever the actions you do, it is not for the for you you are doing, it is not for the body you are doing, it is something for the divine. Divine means what? The best, the godliness. So, what do you understand by this? To start, take the mic. I feel the gap and I So, no, what do you understand? As you concentrate on the gap, what do you feel like? I feel some peace and uh, What do you understand, madam? What do you feel? My heart and my mind is so peaceful and I understand the heart, the God is, is in my, is in me. Good. What do you understand, madam? I feel joyful and happy and uh, I am going to do my all work devotionally. Fine, fine. What do you understand? I can feel the breath, um, uh, breathe actually when it is turning inhale and exhale part and uh, where it is getting turned I can feel like uh, it is like a going in Shiva shape actually. Uh, so, I feel the whole holiness and divine in it. What do you understand? Sir? Those of you, if you find, uh, if you are uncomfortable with the English, you can go in for Tamil. I can feel a uh, fly in the air, I mean, uh, feel and Mike, uh, okay, give him. <coughs> the Shiva Sutra, uh, I understand the breath inside, um, cow, cow is then and then breath goes outside, it's empty, and the divinity is given the breath inside, and then the divinity is, uh, goes for outside. Uh, so, n these effects are uh, uh, given for relaxation in my mind and uh, given the concentrated point for the particular areas. So, it is useful for the, uh, this exercise. What do you think? I feel the peace and, and I feel the God within me. You? Yeah. I, feel I feel the God within me. What do you understand? Yes, I feel uh, very good. Um, when when I was uh, incoming the breath and then uh, outgoing the breath, there's a certain part of gap, and I feel that uh, in that gap, uh, out to hard work within my intention. So uh, I would able to work in that, um, and then uh, my the my the, my mind was. My mind was to go the pathway of Shiva's, so that's all. What do you understand? Uh, I felt peace. Uh, those two, two minutes I am not here. Uh, means uh, I feel very happy. Uh, I got peace. Uh, that's it. I felt very la relaxed. I could see the difference while I'm inhaling the breath and uh, exhaling the breath. As of now, I just know uh, scientifically uh, inhaling and exhaling are the two parts that make us to live. But I could see the difference in time when I'm. Uh, I could see the di time difference between the two inhaling successive inha inha inhaling. There's some there is some time difference. So just now I just come to know there is some supernatural power that that makes us to live. Since if we can't if we can't inhale uh, for a 
for two, two, one or two minutes we will die but that's but there's something there's some supernatural power that hold us to live thank you emit sir why not you also can come no just to share and the point is it dear friends now shiva sutras ninth technique this is what you are going to see shiva says to parvati lie down as dead lie down as dead you are enraged in wrath what do you mean by enraged in wrath you are full of anger full of sadness full of disappointment full of frustration with that feeling you are laying dead you are laying dead without moving your body with full of anger frustration all the negative qualities or open your eyes tear without blinking your what eyelash stare at something but one thing you should not blink but with full anger shiva says to parvati lay there as dead with all the negative feelings writhing around you full of negative feelings but don't move the body just lie dead or look at something without winking your eyes eyelash or suck something and become the sucking three things he says close your eyes and feel as if you are dead with full of anger or look at something with full of the emotion all the emotion but not blinking your eyelash or become the sucking itself okay now the first sutra he says lie as if you are dead but don't deceive even if ant bites mosquito bites you don't feel just leave your body as if it is dead but with your full anger frustration disappointment loneliness sadness all those things are there but just feel like this as if you are dead one man attended is attained his enlightenment enlightenment one man has attained his enlightenment through this method who is that man at the age of 14 from your hometown ramana ramana magrishi anybody from tiruvannamalai yeah. he attained his enlightenment through this technique at the age of uh, 13 or 14 he came out of i mean he was in the house suddenly one day he felt he is dead is not able to move his body he can feel it he can feel his consciousness and he can also feel that he is dead the body is no way moving heart is not beating he is not able to raise his hands he is not able to talk a word everything but he is able to see everything he had the consciousness he knows he is alive in his feelings but he knows the body is dead completely 100% dead after dead to what will happen that young boy understood at the age of 13 or 14 the body is lying down no feeling at all everything is dead he can feel it the entire night the body is dead that's what he felt next day morning he was able to come back and somehow the body was able to move then he understood what is life what is uh, life why men are working and why we earning why do they live what is sorrow what is happiness 
what is joy, what is peace at the age of 14 or 15. Because he has experienced death one night, it changed his entire life and he ran away from his home, came to a hill station called Thiruvannamalai, whatever the food he was eating and sleeping in the streets and caves. Finally, he became so enlightened that the people all around the world, they used to come and visit and ask him, what is the secret of life? And the answer he gave is just a plain answer, three words, try to know who you are, that's all, who you are, who you are, who you are, three words, who you are. Because he was able to understand because death has come. When the death came, when he was not able to move, he can feel his consciousness, his name is forgotten, his bank balance is forgotten, his father's name is forgotten, his education is forgotten, his wealth and health is forgotten, all the name and popularity is forgotten. At that moment, only the consciousness, the body is not moving. Now, this technique which you are supposed to do now. So, here as you feel this, suddenly you feel entire life has changed. With full anger and sadness and disappointment, you are just lying down. All the negative things are there in the body. And that all the negative things makes your body to move. See, when you feel anger, you feel like throwing something, hitting somebody, isn't it so? When you are feeling joyful, how do you feel? You want to shout, you want to raise your hands. You see the cricket players, after hitting on 100 runs or uh, making somebody out, what do they do? They just shake their body, isn't it? So, as the emotions comes inside your body, what will happen? You try to move your body. But here, when those emotions are there, you are not moving the body. This is the sutra here. You are dying, lying dead when all the emotions are there. As the emotions are there, you are not trying to shake your body because emotions will shake, shake your body. You are not trying to, you are controlling the body. And you are being with the anger, we are, you are being with the frustration. That is the reason it is called emotion, is not it? Emotions makes your body to move, but you are controlling the emotion. As you are with the emotion, as you are aware of the emotion, as you understand the emotion and you are the same and your body is dead. See uh, what are all correlations going on, body is dead. You are making yourself body is dead. All the negative emotions are there. Third, you are not able to do anything about the emotions. It is well controlled because you are dead. Then what will happen? What will happen? What will happen? All the negative emotions are there. You feel like killing or hitting or jumping or running. All the emotions are there. Your body is dead. but what you will do? Okay, this is one. Second technique, you keep on staring at something, you are full of negative thoughts, but do not uh, wink your eyes. Try to do it for 3 minutes, only 3 minutes, very difficult you know, for 3 minutes. There was a person who has done it for 3 years, Mecha Baba. He used to see 3 years continuously without blinking his eyes, 3 years. No thoughts at all. When you stare at something without blinking, no thoughts will come. So, all your mental problems, results of mental problems and agonies and loneliness, sadness, everything is result of what? Thoughts. But as you look at something, stare at something without blinking your eyes, no thoughts come. When you are feeling like dead and you are feeling that emotions are not able to move the body, the emotions are what happens? You become aware of the emotions. Emo emotions evaporate themselves. It goes off. Like that, as you keep on seeing something, no thoughts will come. Suppose you are mentally disturbed with hundreds of thoughts, thousands of thoughts. The thought level of are increasing. The speed is increasing. You know, in the traffic, lot of vehicle comes. 
what will happen? The traffic gets jammed. So, like that, as lot of thoughts come, you just stare at something, do not wink your eyes, then what will happen? Your thoughts will vanish. There is one gentleman called Mecha Baba, three years he was looking, and there is a specialist in US. By sitting in front of you, he can say, he will say, how many thoughts are running in your head? What are you thinking? That is one magnet, one power he has, this fellow. Which fellow? One American. This Mecha Baba is a person who does not have a thought, because he is very expert in staring at something. So, one day he went to Mecha Baba, went to US. Mecha Baba is a famous enlightened person, who has a lot of followers. So, that particular psychiatrist, he was sitting in front of Mecha Baba to note down, what are the thoughts are coming. He tried and tried and tried from morning to evening, nothing he was able to get, because no thoughts are there. He was able to control his thoughts. Ramana Rishi was able to control his thoughts, because already he has experienced death. One thing. So, third is very important. What is the third point we have said? Be the sucking and become the sucking. A child first duty, what does it do? What does it do at the time of birth? Immediately coming from the mother's womb, it is pushed outside. As it comes out, what is the first duty it does? It sucks the air, it sucks the air. And by sucking the air, all the blocks have been opened up. So, one sound comes and we say it is crying, it is not the crying, it is trying to catch the breath. Till in the mother's womb, the breath is, the prana is sent through the tube to the child. But this time, it is inside the water, you know, this mother's uh, womb will be inside, the child will be inside, full surrounded by liquid, I think. As the child comes out, the first thing it does, it suck there. The first duty of the child is sucking. The second duty of the child, immediately what does it do? That is natural. It sucks the mother's breast for milk. It gets the prana, first prana inside the mother's stomach, the second prana through the milk, through the mother's breast. That time, the child is so innocent whether sucking the milk. It has become so innocent. Time is not counted there. It is so happy, so joyful. You see sucking, S-U-C-K-I-N-G, like that, whatever the action you do, eating, sleeping, working, operating the computer, whatever the work you do, you do as the child suck the mother's breast for the milk. When you come, when you are completely devotional on your work which you do, or you want to do anything, see I want to teach, teaching and I should be the same, not the teacher and teaching. Teacher and uh, taught, it should be teaching. I should change myself into teaching. You love a girl, I am loving a girl or I am loving a boy, no, you should become the love itself. Any action which you are doing, it has to become on its own itself. That is what it is, uh, the philosophy of 10th, 9th philosophy here. You do not stand behind, become the sucking, become the doer. So, next, once you start doing your work devotionally, without expecting anything, and then whatever the, wor the work which you do, it will be like the child doing, taking the, suck uh, taking the milk from, her, from his or her mother's breast. So, you become so innocent. So, this is the sutra, ninth sutra. So, my dear friends, please close your eyes. <coughs> In 9 Sutra, Shiva says three things, almost all are same, which gives the same result. The first is, lie down as dead, feel your body is dead. 
in wrath. Wrath means what? All the negative qualities, all your frustration, all your disappointment, all your sadness, all your so called desires, what not, everything. So, lie down as dead, enraged in wrath, or, or stare at something, stare at something without moving your eyelash, or still third one, suck something and become the sucking itself. First is lie down as dead with full of anger, frustration, with all the negative qualities, even positive qualities, whatever it is. Because at the time of death, positive and negative does not count. All the feelings are same. Only when you are living, the positive uh, feelings, you, see, you think it is something superior to negative feeling. But feeling is the feeling. Second is, look at something without moving your eyelash. And the third is, suck something and become the sucking. Now, just feel your body is dead. You are taking the soul out of your body. All the anger and frustrations are there in the body, in the mind. But the body is dead. What can you do? Only the emotions can move your body. Only the feelings can move your body. Now you have, have all your anger and frustration, all the negative qualities, but the body does not move. Your body does not move. Stay there like that for some time. You are trying to move your hand, it is not moving. You are trying to lift your face, it is not lifting. You are trying to speak something, you are not able to speak. As you feel, your ego vanishes. What is your ego? It is your I. I is your experience. I is your friends. I is your wealth. I is your health. The high is your education. I is your property, I is your bank balance, I is your titles, your family man and all this. All the I goes off. Just feel the consciousness. Your body is dead. Now slowly you come back to your body. Slowly try to shake your fingers and hands. Try to lift up your hands. Just touch your eyes.
slowly open your eyes <coughs> now dear friends the same technique he says or stare without moving an eyelash for three minutes try sir just open your eyes without blinking without closing your eyelash for three minutes anybody who has the stopwatch put it on for three minutes three minutes you are not moving your eyelash look at something just stare at it and just stare at it for three minutes As you come to the third minute, just tell and put off, sir. Have we reached the three minutes? How many of you are able to do that? So, this is one second and the third is very important sir third is suck something and become the sucking what here he says the sucking is the first action the child does after that is the sucking the breath so whenever you do your duty you do it as the child or as you have done your first duty your first duty was sucking isn't it you became 100 percent involved in that you found tremendous happiness by taking the milk you are very much protected you got the prana sakti from your mother so you are so happy and joyful at that particular moment so in your work whatever the work you do become that See, you eat, become eating. You teach, you become teaching. You play, become the playing. You love, become the loving. 
you work become the working. So, these three sutras, this I mean this particular ninth sutra with three divisions, you try to practice in your day to day, it is going to give a tremendous change in your work. Yes, sir. Now, what do you understand, sir? What do you understand? What do you understand by this ninth sutra, sir? In the first exercise, I feel uh, my soul go get out of the, my body, and I feel some uh, some weight in my body, some weight acting in my body. I have some difficulty to uh, move my body, and uh, I feel I'm standing out of the world. In second exercise, my mind it's like a clear board. I feel everything in my thoughts are vanishing from that and uh, after uh, some one or two minutes I feel my uh, lashes are stuck up like that. So even if I trying to close I can't able to do it. I feel some peace and divinity in there. No, the time of staring at something without blinking, without closing your eyelash, where the thoughts able to come into you know, the difference between you know ordinary state when you are not staring and when you are staring at something, what is the difference you felt? The difference? The difference means it is uh, I feel like the clear uh, it is a clear board, everything is vanishing. When normally, if I feel some relaxation and I feel some peace. Okay, as you stare at somebody, something, generally, as Shri, Lord Shiva says, you go into your third eye, which is hidden inside you, the conscious eye. Okay, good. What do you understand, sir? I just lost my oscillations. Yes, so in my first sutras, uh, I just, uh, I just um, thinking, um, my soul was uh, get out of my body, and my body was in my very uh, high, uh, weight. In my mm, laziness and uh, negative thinking, disappointments, it's nothing, it's that. It's only his body. Um, in every man, uh, we don't have any disappointments, excitement, ego, something, etc. We only have mind to be clear without, uh, without anything. And in my second sutras, um, I just concentrate on one thing, um, uh, concentrate to get on that. Uh, so, you know, so example, second sutra is uh, um, my hard work. It's uh, I, I have to concentrate in my hard work and to get in to prove my um, skills in that. That's all. Not you. In this ninth sutras, I felt that. Uh, I can able to control my negative thoughts by lie lie down as that. Um, then uh, then uh, by s without blinking my eyes, I can able to concentrate one point. It very useful to uh, vanish my negative thoughts, and I feel um, I can able to concentrate on a point. It is very useful to do any work without any disturbance in without any disturbance that's all in the, in the first exercise i felt myself dead but i'm but i'm in conscious state i could able to see all the negative thoughts that i'm having in my mind 
but I could not able to act accordingly. In the in the second exercise, first of all, I could not able to hold. I mean, I could not able to stare for almost three minutes, but somehow I could able to manage it for uh, one or two minutes. But during that time, nothing come to my my mind. I just stared. I tried wantedly to think something while staring, but I could not. I could not think of any, any. I could not able to think any, anything apart from staring. Yes, what do you understand? Uh, in the first one, I felt peace. Uh, also, felt felt like uh, means the breathing and the outgoing breathing. And and in the second one, means uh, behave like a diet. Uh, I tried to do that. Uh, I feel the same peace only, and nothing more. And in the third one, I mean, uh, staring at something. Uh, uh, I tried to stare at least two minutes, but uh, I couldn't be able to do that. Uh, that's all. Anybody? First, uh, fearness. What reason? I I don't know about the is reason say about, but my my mind is so peaceful. So. Okay. Okay. <coughs> I just finished in Tamil for five minutes, and after that, number three. Yet, how the Sivakala Sutra today. விஞ்ஞான பைரவ தந்திரத்திலே சிவன் சொல்கிறார் பார்வதிக்கு உள்ளே எடுக்கக்கூடிய உள்மூச்சு வெளியே விடுகிற அந்த வெளிமூச்சு இடைப்பட்ட அந்த இடைவெளியிலே கவனம் செலுத்து தேவியே நீ தவணம் செலுத்த செலுத்த ஒவ்வொரு காரியங்களை நீ அன்றாடம் செய்து கொண்டிருக்கிற பொழுது இது முதல் கலையிலே நாம் சொல்லி இருக்கிறோம் இந்த முதல் கலையானது அறிவியல் பூர்வமானது மூச்சை உள்ளே எடுக்கிறோம் மூச்சை வெளியே எடுக்கிறோம் அந்த இடைவெளியிலே கவனம் செலுத்தும் பொழுது அறிவியல் பூர்வமானது ஆனால் தெய்வீக குணம் உடையவர்கள் பக்தி மார்க்கம் உடையவர்கள் அவர்களுக்கு இந்த சூத்திரத்தை கற்றுக்கொள்வதிலே கொஞ்சம் சிரமம் இருக்கும் ஆகையா இந்த தெய்வீக சம்பந்தப்பட்டவர்கள் அவர்களுக்காக இந்த எட்டாவது சூத்திரத்தை கொடுக்கிறேன் தெய்வ நம்பிக்கை உடையவர்கள் அதிக பற்றும் பாசம் உடையவர்கள் அறிவியல் பூர்வம் இல்லாதவர்களுக்கு உள்மூச்சை வாங்கிகிறாய் அந்த உள்மூச்சுடனே உள்ளே செல்கிறாய் நெஞ்சுடன் நிற்பதில்லை ஆழ்ந்த மூச்சு அந்த மூச்சு அடி வயிற்று வரைக்கும் செல்ல வேண்டும் உன்னுடைய தொப்புள் வரைக்கும் செல்ல வேண்டும் மூச்சு உள்ளே செல்ல செல்ல அந்த மூச்சுடன் உன் நினைவுகளை செலுத்தி கொண்டு உள்ளே போகிறாய் மூச்சு உள்ளே போகிறது உடலின் மைய பகுதி என்று சொல்லக்கூடிய அந்த தொப்பில் நாம் எடுக்கக்கூடிய மூச்சுகள் நெஞ்சு பகுதியோடு விட்டு விடுகிறோம் அதை ஆழ்ந்து உள்ளே செல்ல வேண்டும் அடி வயிற்றுக்கு போகிறது அதே மூச்சு வெளியே வருகிறது நன்றாக நாம் வைத்து கொள்ளுங்கள் இழுத்த மூச்சு தான் வெளியே வருகிறது அதனால் அது இரண்டு கோடுகளாக வருவதில்லை இரண்டுக்கும் ஏதாவது ஒரு தொடர்பு இருந்தே ஆக வேண்டும் உள்மூச்சு வேறு தனி வெளிமூச்சு வேறு என்றால் தனித்தனி கோடுகளாக போட வேண்டும் ஆனால் உள்மூச்சும் வெளிமூச்சும் ஒரே மூச்சாக இருக்கிற காரணத்தினாலே அங்கே ஒரு வளைவு வரும் அந்த வளைவிலே அந்த இடைவெளியிலே உன் கவனத்தை செலுத்து அதே போன்று மூச்சை விடுகிறாய் உள்மூச்சை எடுக்கிறாய் அங்கே ஒரு வளைவு ஏற்படுகிறது அதே கவனி அதுதான் தெய்வீகமானது பக்தி மார்க்கமானது என்று சொல்லக்கூடிய டிவோஷன் இப்படி நீ கவனம் செலுத்தி கொண்டிருக்கும் பொழுது உன்னை நீயே அறிந்து கொள்கிறாய் என்ன அறிந்து கொள்கிறாய் அறிந்தவனும் நீயே வாக மாறிவிடுகிறாய் அறியப்படுகிற விஷயம் என்னவென்றால் உள்ளே இருக்கக்கூடிய அந்த தெய்வீக தன்மையானது அதுதான் செயல்பாடுகளுக்கு கேட்கிறது நீ உணவு சாப்பிடுகிறாய் யாருக்கு சாப்பிடுகிறாய் உனக்கு சாப்பிடுவதில்லை இந்த தெய்வீக தன்மையை அறிந்து கொண்டால் உடலுக்குள் இருக்கக்கூடிய அந்த தெய்வீக தன்மைக்காக சாப்பிடுகிறாய் எதற்காக குடிக்கிறாய் உனக்காக குடிப்பதில்லை அந்த தெய்வீக தன்மை உள்ளே இருக்கக்கூடிய அந்த டிவினிட்டி என்று சொல்லக்கூடிய அந்த தெய்வீக தன்மைக்கு நீ தண்ணீர் குடிக்கிறாய் 
மூச்சு விடுகிறாய் குளியல் எடுக்கிறாய் உனக்கு குளிப்பதில்லை அந்த தெய்வீக தன்மையான உன் உடலுக்குள்ளே இருக்கக்கூடிய அந்த தன்மைக்கு நீ குளிக்கிறாய் ஸோ இந்த மூச்சுகளின் இடைப்பட்ட அந்த கால அந்த இடைவெளியிலே கவனம் செலுத்தும் பொழுது தெய்வீக தன்மையை அறிகிறாய் உன் உடம்பு உனக்கு ஒரு கோயிலாக தோன்ற ஆரம்பிக்கிறது பல முனிகள் பல முனிவர்கள் பல ஞானிகள் தங்கள் உடலை கோயிலாக வைத்து கொண்டிருக்கிறார்கள் இப்பொழுது நாம் நம் உடலை கோயிலாக வைத்து கொண்டிருக்கிறோம் இரண்டு வகையாக பயன்படுத்துகிறார்கள் புனிதமாக உடலை பாவிக்கிறவர்கள் இருக்கிறார்கள் உடலை ஒரு மெக்கானிசம் ஒரு இன்ஸ்ட்ருமெண்ட்டாக நினைத்து கொண்டு அதை கேடுகட்டு அதை சீரழிக்கிறார்கள் மது அருந்தி புகை பிடித்து இரவெல்லாம் தூக்கம் தூங்காமல் வேலை செய்து கொண்டு உடலை மறந்து தொப்பையும் தொந்தியுமாக முகமெல்லாம் இரத்த கொதிப்பும் ஆயிரம் நோய்களை பெற்று கொண்டிருக்கிறார்கள் அப்போ உன் உடலிலே இருக்கக்கூடிய தெய்வீக தன்மையை அறிந்து கொண்டால் நோய்கள் வருவதற்கு வாய்ப்பே இல்லை ஸோ இதுதான் இந்த எட்டாவது சூத்திரம் அடுத்ததாக நாம் ஒன்பதாவது சூத்திரம் சென்றோம் ஒன்பதாவது சூத்திரத்தில் என்ன சென் சொல்லி இருக்கிறது என்றால் ஆயிரம் கோபதாபங்கள் உடம்பிலே இருக்கிறது உணர்ச்சிகள் உணர்வுகள் அத்தனையும் இருக்கிறது ஆனால் உடம்பு எந்த விதமான ஈடும் கொடுக்காமல் செத்த புணமாக இருக்கும் பொழுது ஒரு கொசு கடித்தாலோ நீ ஏமாற்றக்கூடாது உன்னை நீயே ஏமாற்றக்கூடாது அப்படியே உணர்ச்சி வசப்பட்டு அப்படி படுத்து கொண்டிருக்கிறாய் எக்காரணத்தை கொண்டும் உடம்பில் ஒரு சிறு அசைவு கூட எடுக்காத பொழுது நீ என்ன அறிந்து கொள்கிறாய் உண்மையை அறிந்து கொள்கிறாய் தெய்வீக தன்மையை அறிந்து கொள்கிறாய் உணர்ச்சிகளுக்கு இங்கே இடமே இல்லை என்பதை அறிந்து கொள்கிறாய் உணர்வுகளும் உணர்ச்சிகளையும் நீ உணர்வு பெற்று அதை உடல் மூலமாக வெளியே காண்பிக்காமல் அந்த உணர்வுடன் இருக்கும் பொழுது அந்த உணர்வுகள் மறைந்து விடுகிறது அடுத்ததாக அல்லது என்று சொல்கிறார் எதையாவது பார்க்கும் பொழுது கண்கள் இமைகளை மூடாமல் அதையே குறைந்தது ஒரு மூன்று நிமிடம் நான்கு நிமிடம் ஆறு நிமிடம் ஒரு மணி நேரம் என்று பார்த்து கொண்டே இரு என்று சொல்கிறார் பார்க்க பார்க்க என்னாகி விடுகிறது மனதில் வரக்கூடிய சிந்தனைகள் வராமல் இருந்து விடுகிறது மனது தெளிவாகிறது மூன்றாவது தத்துவம் என்ன என்று சொல்கிறார் அதே தத்துவத்தில் அல்லது என்று சொல்லி மூன்றாவது இதற்கு பதிலாக இது இதற்கு பதிலாக இது என்று சொல்லிக்கொண்டு குழந்தை பிறந்தவுடன் செய்யக்கூடிய முதல் வேலை காற்றை சுவாசிப்பது அது உறிஞ்சுகிறது அப்போ அந்த குழந்தையினுடைய முதல் வேலை உறிஞ்சல் அதற்கு அடுத்ததாக அன்னையிடமிருந்து மார்பகங்களிலிருந்து பாலை அது சுரக்குகிறது உறிஞ்சுகிறது அங்கே அமைதியும் சாந்தமும் மகிழ்ச்சியும் அந்த குழந்தை பெறுகிறது அதே போன்று நீ செய்யக்கூடிய வேலை எந்த வேலையாக இருந்தாலும் அன்னையின் பாலை கொடுப்பது போல அந்த முதல் கடமையை நீ செய்தது போல செய்து கொண்டிருக்கும் பொழுது அங்கே அமைதியும் சாந்தமும் அந்த வேலையிலே ஒரு தெய்வீக தன்மையும் அடைவாய் என்பதை இந்த ஒன்பதாவது சூத்திரம் சொல்கிறது ஸோ ஒன்பது சூத்திரங்கள் இது வரைக்கும் பார்த்தோம் பாருங்கள் பயிற்சி செய்துங்கள் செய்து கொள்ளுங்கள் இதில் ஏதாவது ஒரு டெக்னிக் உங்களுக்கு ஏற்றதாக இருக்கும் இன்னும் பார்ப்போம் தேங்க்யூ வெரி மச்